integration is such a hot topic mm -hmm. everywhere, but in particular at Red Hat. Mm -hmm. I can't go down any hallway, I think, without talking about integration. Tell me a little bit about uh, the area of cloud native integration. What is it and why is it important? So we talk about cloud native integration. First, let's talk about cloud native app development. And when people target the cloud, what they're interested in, right? And there's two main things, in my opinion. The first being elasticity and scale. So in the old days, what you might say, you used to have to provision a machine, a bare metal machine, and install software on it. It was a very heavyweight process, right? Whereas the cloud is, and that's an inelastic type of situation, right? Okay. Where you co constantly, to add capacity, you have to keep provisioning more and more boxes, right? Whereas with the cloud, it's amorphous, it's nebulous. You can start to expand it and contract it as you need to, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and that gives you very large scales we see with most of the large, you know, internet providers out there today, right? So the first thing is we need that scale. We need to go start small and scale out or scale down as needed. And the second thing is agility, right? So one of the things that when we had that problem of scaling is that when we wrote code, we needed to deploy into production. It was a really long process to get that code into production. And what we want is more self-service and the ability to say, I've written my application. I want to have a, a, a pipeline that builds and deploys that out to production as fast as possible. Something that's measured maybe in minutes or hours instead of weeks and months in a traditional process. Okay. So if we say we have scale, right, elasticity, and kind of agility, then what does that mean in terms of technology and architecture? Okay. And that starts to mean containers. The industry as a whole is using containers as the basis for doing cloud-based platforms, right? And so container platforms such as Kubernetes have been on the sure. scene, right? And, and, and Kubernetes is built all around Linux containers, okay? Uh, and so once we have those core technologies, we start to look at architectural patterns to put those into use and how to be pragmatic in the adoption of those technologies. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, the most popular things that I'm sure you've heard of is microservices, right? Sure. Everybody's talking about microservices, yeah. right? And the idea is small, lightweight deployments, breaking up a monolithic application into small little pieces, and then deploying those as individual containers in a cloud-native type of way, right? One of the key aspects of agile integration is this concept of distributed integration, right? Mm -hmm. Putting integration where you need it. And so all applications, whether they're greenfield or brownfield, right, are going to need integration in some form. Mm -hmm. If you look at a pure microservices application, that's total greenfield, okay? It's all the fanciest, latest, it's polyglot, the best languages, right, all this type of thing, you designed it all on your own. Mm -hmm. Even in that situation, you have a concept of, um, of domain models. And so you have bounded context between these individual microservices while they all have their own version of data. So they all define their own version of customer, let's say, sure. or product, right? Mm -hmm. And in that situation, you still have the need for transformation because you need to move and traverse between these bounded contexts, right? right. So classic integration is, is, you know, is relevant in that field. When we look at um, cloud services in the abstract, you have different levels, right? You've got uh, platform as a service, mm. as an example. Uh, how does that fit with what you're doing with agile or distributed integration? Is there different things at different levels? Great question. So if we think about distributed integration as a concept, I like to think of it in terms of uh, an x-axis and a y-axis. Okay. okay. So the x-axis is for developers putting integration exactly where you need it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's always the developer that's going to want the classic hub and spoke ESB style integration. Right. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. Right? So continue to do that. Right. And but then there's a, a developer that says, hey, I have a microservices application that consists of 10 microservices. One of those microservices needs to do connectivity to another system. So they okay. need the ability to not build their whole application around an ESP, but just in the context of their microservices application, okay. have that one service that handles integration. Okay? Mm -hmm. There's yet another type of developer that inside of their microservices application, or just normal application, they want to embed integration logic. right? So there's an entire spectrum of how you can distribute that for the okay. developer. And that would be the x-axis, making the integration logic as available as it needs to be, no matter what kind of application you're developing. Okay? The y-axis is the persona of who's performing that integration. Okay? So typically, when you talk microservices, you're talking about a developer. This is a techie right. person. They have a lot of institutional knowledge around integration. Mm -hmm. right? On the y-axis, you start to talk about people that are non-developers. 
that understand business processes, they understand business data, but they're not going to write code to solve okay. an integration problem, right? These are users of Salesforce, right? And Marketo and NetSuite and Workday and these types of SaaS offerings, right. for example, right? These users, they still have the same problems that classic developers have when it comes to integration. They have data lakes, right? They have, sure. you know, customer, they need, they have master data type of problems, right? They have all these issues that a classic integration developer does. And so we need to be able to provide an abstraction to this user so that they're not have to write code to solve a problem, right? An integration problem, but they can actually use a higher level user experience to save the to solve the same problem. In almost anything that we do in computer science. Uh, at some point you want to raise the level of abstraction. There's generally a performance trade-off for doing that, but it allows people with different skill sets so to that's participate. An, absolutely, it's an excellent point. And, and performance can be an issue, but then mm -hmm. flexibility of the solution can also be an issue, oh, sure. right? So let's say we, uh, with this additional layer of abstraction, we've simplified, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, when you've simplified things, you no longer have the flexibility that you would as a developer to right. choose any path, right? So a key aspect of our strategy there is to have a platform that allows you not only to host code written by what some people call a citizen developer. You know, this is a, a non-tech or you know, non-technical, yes. non-developer type of user, right? That same platform can also host code written by developers. So you can actually have developers and citizens contributing to the same platform, solving problems together, right? Then you're optimizing the approach depending on who's doing this integration because all companies have both of these personas sure. in them, right? And so this gives you a single strategic platform mm -hmm. to satisfy both users. Talk to me a little bit about what's next. What are you working on that's coming up? Sure, so I'm very excited. The next major version of Fuse, our integration platform, mm -hmm. is coming up, Fuse 7, in mid-2018. Mm -hmm. So many of the things we talked about in Agile integration, we're really pushing the envelope there when it talks about the iPads capability and enabling new types of users to right. take advantage of integration. So that's a, a new aspect of our platform that's super exciting, and the early feedback's been really, really great. You know, people, it, it's empowering the integration function within the enterprise, right? Not only for the developer, but also for the other users that don't want to write code to solve these problems. So, great. Yeah. I look forward to seeing it. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks a lot.